kind of configurable emitter type. So now you can control this stuff from the outside. That's pretty cool. One severe limitation at the moment is that you cannot expose this kind of um, object link button here. Unlike the uh, the parameters for the rate and the velocity here, I cannot expose this um, emitter object, which would of course be quite an important part of the um, emitter configuration. So, uh, for example, if I just have a second instance of this emitter type now, um, I can change the rate and the velocity, but I cannot actually change the emitter object. Uh, so that's one thing we definitely have to look into. Anyway, let's leave the emitter for now and uh, take a look at the other stuff you can do on the outside. So these um, nodes that we have here, currently just the gravity node, uh, are all the things that are applied to the particles um, on every time step, on every update. And uh, one important aspect of particles is how you render them. And currently we have two different ways for rendering particles. One of them is the render billboard node. This node, um, well, does just that. It displays billboards, as you can see here, little squares pointed to the camera, at least in this mode. You can also change the directions here, but this is the most useful, having them pointed at the camera. You can use this for um, pseudo-fluid stuff like smoke, uh, and things like that. But it's not terribly useful at the moment because we don't have real particle interaction, so you would need some sort of uh, clumping feature or um, efficient turbulence and things like that um, to make actual smoke simulations with it. Um, so uh, let's just take a look at the other rendering node, which is this one, duplicate object. And uh, this is quite useful when uh, each one of your particles um, should be an object, basically. Um, so, in order to use this, we'll just add another object, say a cone. Make this a little, uh, can keep it this way. Um, and we'll use this as the duplication object. So, by linking this here, we have currently we actually have to make a time step. Uh, but you see, we get objects, basically. And uh, this is, of course, actual object duplication, so um, it has very little memory overhead. So uh, you can use a lot of objects, a lot of geometry, without actually filling your memory up. Now, um, to make it a little more interesting, we can also change the orientation of this object. Currently, they're, you see they're all pointing downwards. Um, the initial orientation of this can also be set in the emitter with this attribute here. You see this is kind of a pink color because it's actually a different data type. But you can construct this easily with a rotation math node. So the standard already is here from axis angle, so if I just plug this in. And now I can, for example, whoops, if I change my axis like uh, this, doesn't really mean a lot so at the moment, but you can see I can change the orientation of my particles. For example, um, this is useful if you want to um, set the initial rotation, let's say, to the normal vector uh, at the point that we're emitting it. We have this here. Then uh, what we can do is we can create a rotation from two different vectors. And uh, since our initial up vector would be plus z, we have to take... Oops. 
zero zero one would be our initial vector and we want to get the rotation of this vector to the normal vector so we just take the normal vector plug this in here and now okay it's not very visible but if I just increase the velocity a bit so they fly away you can see they actually point in the direction of the normal you can also um, make them slightly smaller a little bit pointier yeah so this is uh, how you can deal with rotations in the whole thing and um, mm, yeah we could now just add another effect for example we can add a torque torque is basically um, a rotational force so um, to show you the effect let's just run this and add a little bit of torque on the x-axis which means we increase the rotation around the x-axis they actually rotate faster the longer they fall Oops. Yeah, and in this way you can build uh, all kinds of uh, funny effects the general idea is that uh, in the end you would uh, take these complex effects which can get quite large of course uh, and you would put them into a group node and basically build assets this way that's the idea um, okay instead of just playing around here now um, let me just open two files I've made uh, one is this one here. I've pre-rendered this in cycles, so you can just take a look at it. So this is just a, a hail of arrows thing. Quite simple still. Uh, one thing you may notice is that when the arrows hit the ground, they uh, stick to it. This is not actual collision detection. It's just a a simple fake way to do it. It just checks the uh, the height above the ground and then stops the particle simulation once they hit it. This is the, uh, the full effect here. Not very complicated still, but uh, you could now take this and put it into a group node and then uh, you basically get a reusable effect for arrows. The whole thing also has a kind of uh, controller object which is this one here uh, which gives you the initial direction of the arrows so if I move this here for example you can see they shoot the arrows in a different direction So that's already quite a nice effect. Um, but the one I'm really proud of <laughs> is... Hang on. This one. This is pretty cool. You see it's already quite complicated. But I'll just run this. This is quite nice. So this uh, uses some sort of uh, faked um, air drag model and uh, yeah, makes the leaves tumble. It's not totally realistic still, it could be a little faster sometimes, but it's a good start. So this is just to demonstrate um, what you can actually do with nodes in combination with particles. Alright, yeah, that's it for now. Um, I hope you liked it, and thanks for watching.